boats. I have no idea of electric boats. Um, very limited info on transportation, renewables, but highly interested in any sustainable project. Um, so with me right now is uh, Suhail, um, who's starting this webcast and invited us to just discuss um, something about electric boats. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thanks, uh, Rie. But what we are trying to do is, how do we bring technology to the end users? The climate change discussions today have been top down. People are trying to do up there, but a lot of students down there lot of young entrepreneurs want to make a change and there is a gap in between. <coughs> so objective of this podcast, it was just an idea we discussed saying, maybe we can discuss with the wider audience, sit together what ideas we have. Maybe there's someone out there who will contribute and together in five or six episodes, we'll learn much more than what we know today. Yeah. So maybe we start by introducing ourselves first. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with you. Okay. So I'm Marielle Marasigan. I'm one, I'm one of the founders of Electric Banka Corporation. So uh, in this company, we want to be the pioneers in bringing electric boats here in the Philippines. Okay. Hi, I'm Jerry Madlang Bayan. Um, I'm also one of the founders of Electric Banka Corporation. And just a little background about myself. So I was priv what got me interested with this project is that um, we joined the international competition, it's called Shell Eco Marathon, wherein we, we made a car from scratch, so either powered by gasoline, by hydrogen, or battery. And since our, our, our previous project was an electric, um, electric car, so, and Mr. Sohail told us about, why don't we apply it to boats? So that's how it all started. So right now we're wow. here and Let's see what happens on this, on this project and then in, in this episode. Yeah, I'm Sohel Hasni. I have a day job. I work for a bank, but I'm a generally enthusiast about technology, gadgets, and others. And I'm a very firm believer that the solution to climate change lies in technology. So this is sort of my evening job, if you like, to connect people together, bringing in ideas, people, so that we can make a difference. Okay, and I'm Ria. Uh, my expertise is on gender and community building. Um, just really interested to have a chat and learn more from these people. Um, so you mentioned that <coughs> Sohail actually um, introduced like what about this question about what about boats? Yeah. Um, what's the history of actually coming up with this idea? Um, okay, it just it happened like this. I was talking to Marielle. Okay, Marielle, do you, do you have any? Because we want we want to start a business. We want to want we want to leave a legacy, legacy in the Philippines, or as we live our lives. Okay, and then she told me like, I know someone who can who can give us idea on how we can start a business. Okay, and then at first they were just talking. I didn't know, and then he said, uh, this guy is from this bank, <laughs> and then I was like, okay. Then I started searching for the person, and then okay, I'm going with you. And then we chatted, and then I told I told Sohail about what uh, my past project, which is the Shell Eco Marathon, and then he thought uh, he told us about electric boats, and it never crossed my mind to do an electric boat. So that's how it all started. <laughs> I see. All right. And Sohail here is a very um, very experienced person in yes. terms of renewables. Yes. Um, would you like to tell me more about your uh, projects? Yeah, I think. Uh, the way the world is changing today, especially in the electricity industry, what happened to the computer industry, it's, uh, 20 years ago no one had telephones, now everybody has multiple. And that's not everybody like people like you and I who had access to resources, it's everywhere. So same thing happened in the electricity and basically happening because of two things. One is solar panel that anybody and everybody can generate electricity because it was only the power companies who could do it. And then second is our ability to store electricity. That was never a thing, this is batteries. I was telling you earlier that even just six, seven years ago, batteries were about $1,000 a kilowatt hour. And today, last year was $178, and the forecast is will be $50 soon. Yeah. So I get excited about saying, when it becomes $50, how do we make sure that people who are the end users, especially in the developing Asia, 
like you mentioned, yeah. the people with electric, with a normal boat, how can they bring that technology immediately rather than waiting for six, seven years? So that's what gets me excited. So very excited to be connected with all of you so that we can make a difference together. So normally when you start a project, there's usually this problem that we're trying to solve. So what exactly um, is your motivation for actually conceptualizing this project? Okay, you want to answer that? Or okay. <laughs> so uh, one of our motivation is that uh, as the regular pump boats here in the Philippines, if you're familiar with it, it's uh, powered by diesel. So for example, uh, they're going to sail in the islands here in the Philippines. There will be a lot of emissions, CO2 emissions, and then there will also be uh, noise pollution. Like uh, if you're familiar with the sound of a normal engine. So with EVs or the electric boats, what we can do is uh, reduce the emission or uh, clear out all the emissions. And then we could also have a smooth sailing boat with EVs that we're going to do. And also to add to that is that because I noticed I'm a, I'm a fresh graduate, now usually TCs from school are just uh, are gone to waste. Like after school, just put it to waste because they don't really continue it, right? So that's why to, uh, to my previous classmates in, we're currently partnered with De La Salle University, that's what yes. And so I told them, guys, would you like to do a project? And then that's why, okay, let's do electric boats. And so right now they're currently constructing the boat and you know, we want to, I want them to have that sense of their, their thesis just doesn't end in school but uh, it's something that they could use uh, like a legacy for them. Like they would be, uh, they'll be part of, um, of revolutionizing the tourism industry and, the, and our transportation in the Philippines. You mentioned about the tourism industry. So how can tourism industry benefit from what you're trying to create? Okay, first, um, right now uh, we want, since I've, uh, I came from one island, not came, but I didn't live there, but <laughs> I just went there for uh, for three days. And then I noticed that it causes a lot of noise pollution. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, I'm a mechanical engineer by profession. And I know the pollution it causes and the heat that uh, the, the heat that the engine produces damages or it disrupts the environment or ecosystem of the fishes there. And the cause and the, and the effect of that is they're leaving their ecosystem. They're looking for other places to, to live or because uh, we cause so much uh, pollution to their to their current ecosystem. So how can the tourism industry benefit from this? Um, example, if you're in Palawan or El Nido, in living in a five-star or in a, in a good hotel, and then you're offering a pristine or a very nice experience, and then what if one morning you wake up and you hear that tak, 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 that noise, right? And with electric boats, we uh, we will be eliminating that problem. And so with that, while reducing the pollution, they're also helping the tourism industry that this country is also promoting um, green solution on how they can change the transportation system. <laughs> no. Yeah, if I may, just take it. Like, just imagine you're looking from a satellite view of this landscape now and you zoom down, you go to Philippines, you look around, Philippines, I think it spends close to $10 billion a year yeah. importing oil, and a lot mm. of that goes to boats because you have 7,000 islands. You go down, you go to Palawan, and you see the ecosystem. A boat owner, a fisherman, not the richest person around, he w uses oil, which comes from where? You have to go to the satellite view. It comes from Middle East, come from somewhere yeah. else. There is an inventory there that a lot of losses, pilferage and blah, blah, blah. He himself possibly carries a 50 liter or a 100 liter reserve because at any time, if the price is very high or the supply is there, he's fishing on stock. So his livelihood depends on, and it's an expensive exercise. Yeah. And then he goes fishing in the morning, wakes up the whole neighborhood with that tech, tech, tech sound as you <laughs> mentioned. Oh, look, they're fishing. Again. And there is an alternative. Because he could have a few solar panels and a battery. I understand the prices are expensive now, but it won't be tomorrow. 
and then the whole ecosystem could be completely gone off grid. Yes. You do not have to rely. So if you look at from that ecosystem where Jeru's and Merrill is trying to make a difference and you again go to the satellite level, you realize that that oil need not to be flow all the way from there because we all have the sun mm -hmm. and yes. the technology is there and we can tackle climate change. So yeah. it's not only this just tourism, it is the energy security, it is the livelihood, it is creating new market, especially you mentioned interested in the women uh, businesses. This could create businesses that never existed before. Yes, right. Um, in terms of, so I don't really have an idea on electric boats, but I, ha I have an idea on electric vehicles. Okay. So, um, how is how do you visualize like the charging stations would be like? Okay, for the charging station in on the in the larger scale is that uh, for the uh, actually we're gonna talk about that in the next episode because we would invite experts on how they can help us. How would we build charging stations? How would mm -hmm. Will it be easy? Will it be hard? Since Philippines is an island, so that means it's sep it's uh, it's disconnected from the grid, right? Yeah. So, so we would did experts on how we would be uh, on how we will build that. So, guys, if you know someone or if you're someone who's uh, um, knowledgeable about charging stations or or how we can build this, please connect with us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just want to add, like, I'm not failing to notice. This microphone right now, it's running with these batteries because the PowerPoint is quite far away. And this is the convenience. Now, that means we could be sitting in a remote island and operating this microphone out of these batteries. The only thing matters, where is electricity coming to these batteries? It could come from a grid far away or locally or from, from a solar charger. So same thing applies to the boat. This could be a boat in a remote rural island and getting charged from a battery and that battery can get charged from if there's electricity and most likely those electricities are also remote areas yeah. produced from diesels. It would be better as the solar price is coming down to use solar power. Yeah. So that's the issue that technology gives us the choice to go off grid in many different ways. This is one innovative way of getting off the grid. Yeah. yeah, so um, in terms of, so we're talking about energy renewables, which is uh, a bit of a male dominated field. Um, what is your motivation actually for also being involved in this um, project? Oh, okay, so as uh, in the corporate world, it's been dominated by male. So I want to be involved in this project since uh, I want the women that th we have the power or we have the voice that we can do something for this world or we can do something that can revolutionize the tourism industry or uh, we can do something that can make a dent in this in the Philippine industry and, and if I may add um, usually because boats of course and then you know carrying solar panels carrying batteries is not an easy fit right for women right yeah. but um, I think with the, uh, with the with the industry that we're trying to or the business that we're trying to build is that we have a lot of brilliant electric uh, electrical engineers and electronics engineer here in the Philippines so instead of them working abroad or maybe just working in the office working in the design firm maybe this is the time for them that they could be part of the of the Field, uh, field engineering, because this wouldn't. Um, I mean, this male or female, this can be done. So it doesn't matter for male or female. Yeah, I think I'll just add uh, one. I, I've got two engineering degrees, so I can criticize the engineers without offending wow. anybody. Amazing, amazing. Uh, oh, wow. No, no. The issue here is uh, today. If my boat doesn't work, I'll go to a mechanic to fix it because he most likely it's he will fix it based on Usually the it's knowledge uh, he has. But he won't have the ability to redesign the sort of gasoline engine because it's a very sophisticated piece. Now when we go to electric, also people talk about, oh, okay, it's also I need an engineer to run my electrification of the board because there's a risk of electric shock. And what the magic can happen, I hope you do that, is 
when supplies are DC, say 12 volt, like a electricity that come out of a battery in a car, it never gives you electric shock because you are never worried when you connect a power bank to your phone, yes. thinking about electric shock, it is electricity. So the magic that can happen here, solar panel that produces DC, you store in batteries that produces DC, you take it out from batteries, put it into a motor, also DC, it will be a very simple plug and play technology. You don't need the engineers to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. So if you want to bring in some young women or a women entrepreneur, anyone, it will be a low skill activity without being very sophisticated because it could be all plug and play and you don't have the risk of getting electrocuted. So that will be the best thing about electric boat. But we will obviously ask some of the experts to give opinion when yeah. we post this podcast. Right. So um, for sure, there are other people who are already working on this, probably a similar concept uh, and trying to solve this problem. But what do you think is your competitive advantage um, in terms of developing this idea? Competitive advantage is that um, here in the Philippines, no one has really done it in a larger scale. Like no one is, I don't know if, if there is, please um, with sit us. with us and connect with us. We want to know more about what you're doing and maybe we can do this together. Um, I haven't really seen any community or any, anyone really focusing on how we can change that. Because as you can see, we're just, until now, we're using pump boats and that I haven't, as I was searching, no one's really, no one is currently doing it yeah. uh, the way we do it. So I think that's our competitive edge. Now, I think the competitive advantage is the that power, we're all... power of us because I right. sit in a different uh, place than you are. I have been quite active on social media, especially LinkedIn. Yeah. And uh, I possibly have, if I go through, connected with the top 10, 20, 100 people who are involved yeah. globally on electric vo boards and batteries initiative. So bringing that knowledge, bringing those connection to yourselves, mm -hmm. I think that's the competitive advantage. I think we have a very good team as in studying. And if we can establish a community, that can take it to the next stage. So I think that's the advantage. And then we are not competing with anyone. Yeah. We said, let's work together and make it a bigger advantage, not necessarily competing. What is the advantage of, um, like, let's say, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> I think what you wanted to ask about electric boats and gasoline savings and what are the value benefits, that sort of thing. Hmm. Or there are other advantages. Other advantages or other uses? I mean, other uses are really fascinating piece when you think about it. Right, Philippine has, unfortunately, because of climate change and other reasons, you have a lot of typhoons and others. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine you have a boat which has about 100 kilowatt hour of batteries. And this boat can easily go and light up 500 LEDs public lighting yeah. for the entire night for a few days. So in ca whenever you have a typhoon situation, an accident situation, these are energy stores sitting yeah. there. Yeah because you won't be able to light up lights because the power lines most likely going down. So when you have lights, we are animal of sight that reduces security risk, all sorts of problems when you have light. So that would be the other benefits. And considering that Philippines gets like, I don't know, 20, more than 20 typhoons a year. Yeah. So it's like a portable power station. like. Okay, uh, like this, some, uh, Manila has no electricity right now. Okay, you cannot bring a huge uh, generator then. Okay, bring the generator then. No, it's going to be too heavy. But you have a, if you have an electric boat, an autonomous one, you can just send the boat there, then plug it there, and then, you know. Like the it's a remote rural area. Yeah, in the, either you can, it, it could be used for, for um, remote areas or uh, typhoon-stricken areas. Because I know examples, I mean, related that some cities when there was a power crisis long long time ago they brought in a nuclear submarine and connected a the submarine nuclear submarine oh. to the grid because it what, is a power station what right? countries i mean <laughs> i don't want to refer i have to check my numbers but i know okay, I, okay. I, I know but exactly wow. what happened this was done in 2003 
it, it's an, an unexpected wow. benefit. I mean, it's something that pump boats um, cannot definitely do. Yeah. Um, but instead of its main purpose of just for transportation mainly, um, it apparently has a lot okay. of other uses. Um, what's your vision for Electric Banka Corporation? Well, our goal is by 2020 is we'll have 10,000 boats around the yeah. Philippines. And we're definitely going to work with that. Yeah. <laughs> so That's about 20 months away. Uh, 20, 20 months, months away. away. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, hey, nothing's impossible, right? Yeah. I mean, we have One to get your run that song. Yeah. I mean, we can, um, um, we can have the fisherman or the tourism okay, industry, yeah. the typical fisherman or the, what do you call the, the guys who use boats? Um, fisher folks. Yeah, fisher Mamangka. folks. Mamamangka. Mamamangka yeah. in Tagalog. Um, mm. We can help them fund this through, of course. We would need the good hearts of our of our mayors and governors. Yeah. So we can make this a reality. Yeah, I mean, like I looked at this uh, video of a boat and the amount of noises that it was making, it's quite extraordinary. So that's one... <laughs> Just a two-person boat. Making that noise, this is quite significant. So, of course, there is a benefit. Your pristine environment will not be noisy. Like, look here, even in this video, it looks such a pristine environment. <laughs> and this this is quite like, contradictory. Yeah. Again, this is not my video from the YouTube. But apart from that, I mean, I'm just using the electric vehicle numbers. To do 100 kilometers on a Nissan Leaf, you need about 19 kilowatt hour, mm -hmm. which is in the Philippine electricity tariff, maybe less than $2.50, $3. Whereas we all know to do 100 kilometer, you will need about 15, 16 liters of gasoline, which is... $16. So $15 as opposed to $3, $4. So that will be huge savings. Same will be with the boats. And most likely, people riding the boats or driving the boat pay for a gasoline much more than you and I pay in a capital city yeah. because of the inventory cost and other costs. And secondly, what happens? The reason why it happens, the way the gasoline engine works, you take air, you take gasoline, mix in a carburetor of some kind, you power it up, you need spark plug, and it creates lots of heat when the piston moves. Yeah. Yeah. And then you need a whole sort of cooling system, your radiator and others, to cool down. So 80% of the power that you produce gets lost in the heat. But whereas electric motor is 99% efficient. Yeah. So you give the electricity, you get the power output, and it produces. Uh, uh, motion. So there is no losses. Now people will argue, of course, that uh, mm -hmm. yes, if you produce that power using uh, coal fire electricity, then of course may not be. Yeah. But we can have a long discussion on this because despite you pr whether you produce with coal or solar, still there are saving. But we are not getting into that argument. What simple thing is remote rural areas, people are going to use a very poor quality engines because they buy third hand, fourth mm -hmm. hand. They have the worst mm -hmm. efficiency record. How can we bring the best technology, the Teslas of the world has, the best batteries, and equip them and give them the ability to convert sun, which we all have, yeah. into electricity, store it, run the boat quietly. When you wake up, <laughs> you want to go fishing, you don't have to wake up the whole day. <laughs> yeah. That's the simple principle. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's very nice that we're actually with an energy expert here. Yeah. Uh, but um, you've mentioned also about um, contacting your local government and other. Who who can be the other collaborators for this? Um, first, uh, young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, those experts, uh, those who are already doing this project. Maybe we can learn from experience and please contact us if so we can we can learn and know yeah. more about this project yeah I think uh, we are trying to do three things one from my perspective is and please add is to there are a lot of myths and mysteries about electric boat mm -hmm. right how can we eliminate those right. bring in some expert 
in the next six episodes so that we all have a common understanding. That's one. Two, there are a lot of people out there who wants to do similar thing, who may not have even thought about electric boards. So how can we enable them to a bit more ambitious and to think? And thirdly, how can we create a community so that even if we stop our episode, there are continuous discussions. Yeah. All right. Um, any parting words or takeaway from this conversation? So, uh, just like to add up with what Jerry's have said, uh, with our vision. So, one way for us to speed up the ten thousand votes in twenty twenty. So, one way that we can do is for us not to uh, just put the old pump votes into waste. What we can do is, we as a company, we can create a modular kit wherein. Uh, those fishermen or those boat owners can use it on how they can uh, convert their engine diesel boats into an electric boat. So we'll be creating those kind of stuff so that it won't be hard for them to transition that from diesel boat to electric boat. Yeah, so it's just a retrofitting. Yeah. Yeah. You throw the old engine out, you don't have to change the boat, you just put the electric okay. prime mover. Um, what potential do you see as an energy expert um, in terms of this idea? It's huge. It depends how far you want to go because I'm sure if you Philippine has 7,000 island, there must be at least 100 boat per yeah. island that gives you a million yes. boats. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's a start. And then globally, I don't know how many yeah, billions of boats and others. And then you get into other market because if you search the internet now, you'll find like the Tesla car, most of the electric boats are into the luxury market right. high end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are working together to bring how that technology can be brought down to the really poor end user because poor people always end up paying more for electricity. A candle costs way more than your LED bulb, but you can afford LEDs, those people cannot right. on the cent per kilowatt hour basis. So. So the benefits, tremendous, depending on how ambitious these young people want <laughs> yeah, to be. Yeah. I'm here to help uh, any way I can. And that's why we're very thankful that Mr. Soil is with yeah. us. He's, <laughs> he's kind of mentoring us on how we can do this do this project. And so that's why, again, if you're an expert and you're familiar with electric boats or electric vehicles, please uh, contact, contact us, us so that we can learn from you and know more about this project. Yeah. All right. I guess we're, that's it. Yeah. Okay, good. That's it for this episode. <laughs> so we'll Let's see. Let's sort it out. What other can thing can we do? Yeah, so see you guys. See you. On the next episode. <laughs>